Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Rob and we've made a lot of videos on our channel talking about in-home streaming, which basically means replacing your streaming services like Netflix and Prime Video with your own streaming server that runs inside of your home network. The only drawback with this kind of system though is it can get pretty expensive and for those of you that haven't set up in-home streaming before, it can be pretty intimidating having several thousands of dollars sitting in your Amazon cart for something that you might not be sure if you can make good use of. So that's why today we wanted to make a video talking about how you can actually reuse an older PC just like this one along with some free software to store 4K rips of your physical movie collection and stream them over the network to your regular smart TV. And you can do it just like we did for as little as a hundred bucks, which is only a little less than six months worth of Netflix premium 4K plan. Now to do that, you're obviously gonna need some kind of a PC. This Dell Optiplex 790 model actually came from a local university that was dumping a bunch of older computers. So we got a really good deal on it. And while it's definitely showing its age for regular use, it's still a really solid base to start putting together a decent media server. While these are pretty common, there are so many different computers out there that you could easily convert without much work. And everything I'm describing in this video should apply to any PC within around the last 10 years. So if your computer looks anything like this, you might be better off finding a museum to donate it to. But on the other hand, if you have a PC like ours that you want to turn into a media server, or you're thinking about buying one, the first thing you're going to want to do is get some information about the parts inside. If the computer turns on and boots into a desktop like this one, you can see a lot of useful information like the CPU model that's inside and the amount of system RAM. This computer has a 64-bit core i3-2120 processor from 2011 with 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is definitely on the lower end for a project like this, but it should be able to directly stream 4K movies just fine. If for some reason you can't turn on the computer, see if there happens to be any stickers on the front and look for things like Core i3, i5, or i7 inside, for example. While this doesn't tell you a whole lot about the computer, it at least rules out some of the really old computers you might find with Core 2 processors or older, which are too outdated to stream movies very well. The only hard requirements the computer has to meet is support for UEFI to ensure it actually supports large enough hard drives to store media on, as well as a 64-bit processor. Any PC that has a Windows 8 or 10 sticker on it should support these features just fine, but you may have to go into the computer's firmware setup to verify this, and instructions for doing that should be in the owner's manual, which more than likely could be found online with a quick Google search. This is a pretty typical office computer from the time, so we don't have anything like a graphics card inside, but everything else is really easily accessible. What I decided to do for this project is upgrade the limited 1TB hard drive with a bigger 4TB hard drive for storing movies, along with an additional solid state drive for booting the server software. To do this, all I needed was a screwdriver to take out these four screws from the hard drive, and then I was able to remove the mounting bracket to use on the new 4TB drive. Once I had that screwed in, it could all be put back into its metal case, and I also made sure to plug in the two cables that were connected to the other hard drive before setting it down and locking it back into place. This computer has two of these big SATA power connectors for hard drives, so I'll take the second one and plug it into a SATA SSD that I'll be using for this project. I'm also going to need one additional SATA cable to go from the motherboard to the SSD, which I'll plug in right down here. All of these parts can be had for just about $90 on Amazon and they can all be installed within just a few minutes. So I'll make sure to leave links to everything I'm installing in case you want to follow along at home. At this point, you should be good to put the side panels back on and get started with the software setup. Now, as far as the software goes, you have a lot of different options for turning an old computer into a streaming server. This computer had an outdated copy of Windows 7 on it that would work, but since Windows 7 is no longer supported and doesn't get security updates, we wouldn't recommend using it. A really popular option for making a DIY server is a piece of software called TrueNAS, which is an operating system designed for businesses to deploy large file servers, and it offers a lot of professional tools that can really help you set up your server exactly how you want it. For something like this though, I think that's a little overkill and we want to make things as easy as possible. Now you could just install Windows 10 on a computer like this and it would probably work okay, but we feel like there's a few problems with that as well. 
In our experience, Windows 10 can be kind of slow on these older PCs, and since it's going to be discontinued by Microsoft pretty soon, meaning it won't be getting any security updates, we're not comfortable recommending it. This computer is even too old to have support for Windows 11, and buying a new Windows key would add a lot to the cost of this project anyway. So after doing a lot of research and testing, we ended up deciding that we would use Ubuntu Linux going forward. Ubuntu is a completely free operating system that can do anything Windows can do, and a lot of times it can actually be faster on older computers. To install it, just go to the link down below, and on the page you see, scroll down and click the button to download Ubuntu LTS, which is the newest long-term stable version. This will then download an ISO file, which you can flash to a USB stick using a tool like Rufus, which is also linked down below. Download that and the rest is pretty simple. Just run the program, plug a USB stick into your computer, make sure it shows up in the software, choose your ISO file, and click the start button. After a few minutes, your USB will be flashed with the files you need to actually install Ubuntu. At this point, you can unplug your USB stick from your main computer and connect it to your new server PC. Now, if you turn it on and give everything a few minutes to boot, you should be greeted with a Ubuntu installer. Everything here is pretty self-explanatory. It'll ask you what hard drive to install to. Just make sure you select the new SSD and you're pretty much good to go. Once that's done, it'll ask you to reboot your PC and with any luck, you should end up with a fresh new copy of Ubuntu ready to run some actual streaming software. Download and install any updates Ubuntu says it can find and you should be good to go. Now in our theater, we usually use Plex Media Server, which you can install and use for free, and it has a lot of nice features that we really like. But lately, Plex has been introducing some changes to their software that's been pretty concerning to the community as a whole, such as locking more and more features behind paywalls and adding a bunch of ads to the client app that get in the way of watching your own media. For these reasons and more, we've decided to search for an alternative, and after a lot of testing, we're pretty confident recommending Jellyfin as a great and truly free alternative to Plex. Jellyfin is sort of an image of what Plex used to be many years ago, a simple but reliable media streamer that lets you watch movies and TV shows over the local network without any extra bloat. Thankfully, installing Jellyfin on Ubuntu is also really simple. It only requires a single command, which I'll put on the screen and in the description. You just have to type that into the terminal application in Ubuntu and press enter. You'll be prompted to type in a password that you gave Ubuntu during the initial setup, and once that's done, everything will be handled for you automatically. You should now be able to open Ubuntu's Firefox web browser and type localhost colon 8096 into the URL bar to get access to Jellyfin's web setup interface. Just follow each step, and that's pretty much it. If you configure a movie library to use your large internal hard drive like we did here, you can just copy movie files like MKVs here and your server will automatically find them and show them in the main interface. If you followed our other guide on ripping 4K Blu-rays, which I'll link in the description, now you have a pretty good way to store and serve those 4K movie rips over your home network without all that much hassle. I think setting up a Jellyfin server like this is a really good way to go if you have large movie collections. But I will admit that there are a couple downfalls to this approach. Most notably, the way I set this up, we only have one hard drive storing all of the data in the entire system, which means if anything happens to that drive, all of your data could be lost, which is definitely not ideal. The CPU here is also a little slow, so while it works great for directly playing movies and TV shows, if you play on a device that requires transcoding, it's just not going to have any chance of working smoothly. This shouldn't be a problem if you're using a modern Android TV or NVIDIA Shield streaming player, but for older devices, you might want to consider something more powerful for your movie storage. But despite the drawbacks, I'm really happy with the way this project turned out. And for the minimal investment, I feel like it's a really great way to get started with in-home streaming and some basic Linux tinkering if you want to start learning more about running your own home servers. That's a little more work, but there really isn't any other NAS or media server on the market right now that even comes close to a setup like this in terms of value. So I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Please let me know if you're thinking about taking on a project like this, or leave a comment if you've already built your own home server, and let us know what you think. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.